All right. Now, the part of Mark chapter 5 we're going to be focusing on today is that first part. That first part of the story where a man was possessed with the devils. Now, is there any doubt in anyone's mind when you read these stories of people who are plagued with devils or possessed with devils and we see them in the tombs, in the graveyard, cutting himself, crying out, untamable. Does that sound like something that's good or does that sound like something that's bad? I know, I'm trying to break it down real simple. I, I don't, it's kind of hard to walk away from a story like that and say, no, these are all, that's cool. Those are good things. I really want to be like that guy that had the legion. And he was hanging out in the graveyards, right? Isn't that cool? No. No. Jesus healed him of that. And it was a big deal. And the guy was really thankful that he was, you know, delivered from being possessed of all those devils and being out of his mind and, and doing all those horrible things. Pretty simple, right? Then why is it today that people go out this month on the last day of the month and glorify all the wickedness, all the devils, all the evil things, the dark things that exist and glorify that. And we're going to decorate our houses and we're going to put on costumes and we're going to look like all the wickedness and demons and devils that plague people, that it's real, that, that people be, are plagued with devils. Jesus Christ went and delivered many people of those devils. Yet that seems to be a cool thing to do these days. It's brainwashing. Don't let this culture dictate what is right and wrong. So if you're wondering what I'm preaching about this afternoon, I'm preaching about Halloween. And the title of my sermon is Why No Christian Should Celebrate Halloween. And yes, I make a strong stand on this. Now at the end of the day, you leave here, it's between you and God what you end up doing. But I'll tell you what, if you're, if you're celebrating Halloween, you're not right with God. It is a wicked holiday and we ought to have nothing to do with it. I've already preached a sermon at the beginning of this church about being peculiar people, being separated. You know what, this is one of those examples. You know what the world thinks? Not a big deal. I don't see what you're so uptight about. I don't see what, you know, they'll even say, what are you, a Jehovah's Witness or something? Because they don't celebrate like any, they don't celebrate birthdays or anything like that. Look, there's nothing wrong with celebrating. You know where the word holiday comes from? It's holy day. So even to call Halloween a holy day is pretty perverted in and of itself. It's not a holiday. It's not a holy day. It's a wicked day, and we should have nothing to do with it. It glorifies wickedness. It glorifies evil. So why continue the tradition? Because that's all it is, is a tradition. It's a tradition of man. It started a long time ago, and now people have just been born participating from their families and their families and their families, and just this is what we do, and it's just become this tradition and it's become this tradition that too many people don't even think about anymore. And the reason why it continues is because most parents remember, whoa, I did this when I was a kid and it was kind of fun. I had fun doing that. Look, I participated in Halloween when I was a kid. Every year. I dressed up in costumes. I went trick-or-treating. You know, whatever. We did the Halloween parties at school, public school. It's what everybody did. And if you didn't participate, you were weird. You were not normal. But I'd rather not be normal in the world's eyes. I want to be normal in God's eyes. But think about it. If that's the reason why you're saying, well, I did this when I was a kid and I had fun, so I'm going to have my kids do that. Is that the way you really ought to be basing your decisions on whether or not you had fun doing something? I mean, if you just take that, let's just start applying that in other areas of life. Well, it's kind of fun to take some drugs and do drugs. It's kind of fun to get drunk. It's kind of fun to commit fornication and adultery. You know, those things are kind of fun. Okay, well, let's just do it then. No. No. No, we need to apply God's 
morality and laws and, and look at what the Bible teaches about these things and make the proper application. Now, not everything that's fun is a sin, but there is a lot of sinful things that you might say, well, this is kind of fun. It's very telling. Just as I read Mark chapter 5, it's, it doesn't take very much knowledge or wisdom to determine, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And honestly, if you see someone in this condition, it's kind of a scary thing. You know, at Halloween, I'm going to give you all the reasons why, you know, no Christian should ever participate in Halloween, and fear is one of them. This promotion of fear, but I'll get into that a little bit later. But if you were to see someone in this state, in this condi condition, that is a fearful thing. That is something that you're going to be like, man, that, you know, that guy is messed up, screwed up. And under normal circumstances, you'd be like, we're not going to glorify this. But when Halloween time comes around, that's when all of this stuff gets glorified. That's when all the, the maniacal, serial killer type personas, it's just, oh yeah, let's watch this movie. Let's, let's see how, these, how twisted and, and screwed up the guy, you know, like the, what are all those movies? Like the, they're based, a lot of them are based off of, at least semi, based on real stories. With like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and um, I think even the, the Michael Myers one is loosely based on some other stories that happened. Like these, these ones, are Halloween, right? That was the name of that one. I, I know what these ones are. I've seen them. But I'm not encouraging anyone else to go see them. It's, look, I've seen them when I was worldly. But I, but I know what they, what, they, what they do. And they prove, I mean, any horror movie like that, it's, it's, it's this glorification almost of uh, and how, how sick and twisted these days, how sick and twisted can they just come up with and just put in front of your eyes to try to, to, to get a reaction out of you? Try to scare you. Try to do, you know, this is not what we should be looking for for entertainment. Jesus didn't stop his boat to go be entertained by the guy possessed with devils that's living in the graveyard. It's actually a pretty sad state, and he had, the Bible says he had compassion on him. He felt sorry for the guy. He pitied him and cast the devils out of him so he could be relieved of that plague. He didn't just look on it and be like, get the popcorn out and be like, let's see what's he going to do now. Whoa, 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 that was kind of shocking. You know, and, and, but this is the way that, that so many people act today. Now, when a child, child can, children can easily discern that Halloween is not a good thing. They have to be taught from a young age that it's actually okay, no, it's fun, no, let's do that. Anyone who, who has been a parent and had young children when you grow up and you go out to the store, right? Because now, now it's that time of year. All the stores have all their Halloween junk out. And they'll have the skeletons, right? And these just weird faces and these, these demonic things. And the kids, all of my kids, they go to the store and they're, they're scared of that stuff. And like, what is it? I wish they didn't have to have that stuff out. Why? Because that's their natural instinct because that stuff is wicked. You have to teach them, oh no, but see, this is Halloween. I know normally that's all scary stuff, bad stuff you want me to do, but now it's just okay. For this month, for this day, you know, we're just going to say all the things that are kind of weird and abnormal and, and perverted and wicked and evil. Today it's okay to do that. Wrong. It's not okay. And that's why I tell, we, you know, we tell our kids, this is what some people do, but it's wicked as hell, and we're going to have nothing to do with it. And I'm sorry that you have to even be exposed to this stuff, because it's not right that, that children should have to even just go out in public and just see all this garbage. It's scary. I mean, it, it gives kids nightmares just seeing these things. Halloween, you see the skeletons, the gravestones, the zombies, right? Carcasses, whatever people want to use to... To, to make their house look extra scary and, and whatever. We see the guy here, he lived among the gravestones, but that wasn't something that, that anyone should be putting up as, as being a cool thing. Turn if you to Proverbs chapter number 8. So the first point is just this glorification and glamorization of death. 
with the skeletons, with the gravestones, with that type of stuff, death. Halloween glorifies death. We'll see what the Bible says about that, about people who love death. Proverbs chapter 8. Now, just to give you the context, because all of chapter 8 basically is, is the per personification of wisdom. So all of, of chapter 8, it's, it's, it's you know, wisdom crying in the streets, and you know, I'm calling and stuff, and, and, and you read through. It's a poetic chapter, but it's all about having wisdom, right? And even in verse number 12, you see, I, wisdom. So it's, it's wisdom speaking in the first person. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. And then it continues on, but then jump down to verse number 36. Because that's what this whole passage is about, uh, Proverbs 8. Verse 36 says, But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. You know what that tells me? People who love death and want to glorify death and think it's a real cool thing, they're fools. Why? Because they hate wisdom. They hate knowledge. They hate, read Proverbs 8. They, they hate it. Because, they, they, and, because why would you love death? You have to be a fool to love death. Death is not a good thing. What, is, what do you get when you get saved? Eternal life. That's a good thing. Having, having everlasting life, good. Death, eternal death, bad. I know, we're, we're making things just real elementary because the fact that I even have to get up and preach a sermon about Halloween, we ought to break things down. We've got a weird, twisted society that's... I, I don't even know. I don't know the full history on how this has ever become acceptable and accepted in the culture. But it's bizarre. It's totally bizarre. It's totally satanic and wicked. So death, the glorification of death. And you know, it's not just Halloween. There's a lot of the, the what is it, the emo culture, the, the gothic type culture that's just real dark and they like all the dark things and, and, you know, painting their fingernails black and wearing black and everything's just about death. And you know what a lot of those people do? A lot of those people end up cutting themselves. You see the cuttings on their arms and they listen to this wicked music that's all real dark and satanic. And what we saw in Mark chapter 5 was a guy that was possessed with devils cutting himself. Cutting himself. When you see someone cutting themselves, that's a, that's a pretty clear sign that they, they've got a devil because that's one of the symptoms. That's what we see in Scripture as something that someone who's possessed with devils does. And, you know, we ought to have pity on them and try to get them saved, but not glorify it and make it some cool thing and something that kids should look to and be, oh, man, what is, what's that all about? That looks kind of cool. Oh, they're, they're different. No. Don't, don't get deceived by the, the wickedness and the love of death that's just going to prove that everyone that you're a fool. Turn if you would to Exodus. No, turn if you would to Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Reason number two, besides the, the glorification of death, is the sorcery and the witchcraft associated with Halloween. I mean, what's probably one of the most common things you're going to see about Halloween or decorations or whatever, or people dressing up? A witch, Right? You're going to see the big black hat, maybe carrying a broom, black dress, whatever. whatever. Whatever type of witch they want to dress up as a witch. What does the Bible say about witches? Well, Exodus 22, 18 says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. You shouldn't even allow a witch to live. So, obviously I know that the people dressing up aren't real witches, but do you, do you really think it's a good thing? When God's law says... If there's a witch, they deserve to be put to death. The death penalty. They are a criminal that deserves to die. Well, I'm going to just look and, and act like this person who deserves a death penalty. Just for fun. Yeah, because that's real fun. Just to step into the shoes of someone who's just extremely wicked and abominable. You're in Deuteronomy 18. We'll see just one more example. And, you know, there's multiple places in the Bible that say this, but I'm not going to go through every single passage about the witches and wizards and everything, but we're going to see one here pretty solid in Deuteronomy 18, verse number 9. When thou art come into the land 
which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Now again, Christian, why do you think this wouldn't apply to you? If God was telling the children of Israel, look, I cast out these wicked people. They did abominable things and I don't want you learning their ways. Don't be like them. You're going to be different and I'm going to give you my law and I'm going to give you wisdom and I'm going to give you knowledge and understanding and you're going to love righteousness and hate the evil way and I don't want you learning what they do and copying and mimicking and doing what they do. So, Christian, you've got the Bible and you've got people, heathen people, that don't love God, that don't care about His Word, that are glorifying death, that are dressing up as witches, and you want to just learn after the abomination of the heathen and just participate in all that? Well, let's keep reading here. Verse number 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. That's a pretty complete list. I mean, there's all kinds of things mentioned there, but it's all around the same basic thing. The occult, witchcraft, magic, psychics, you know, whatever. The horoscopes, all of that stuff. Whatever different names people want to give, it's all basically in the same group, the same category. It's wicked as hell, and you should have nothing to do with it and not just dress up like it for fun. The Bible says in verse number 12, For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. So he flat out says, This is an abomination in my sight. In a couple of verses earlier we said, You shall not learn to do after the abominations. So he says, I don't want you to learn those things. These specific things, these are abominable in his sight. So why do we want to learn after the abominations of the heathen and just have fun with it? And participate in it? Oh, I don't know why you think it's such a big deal. Well, you know what? If God's word didn't bring it up, then maybe I wouldn't think it was a big deal. But when God specifically says, I really, really hate these things, and anybody who does this deserves to be put to death, that takes a little bit of a different tone now. That has a little bit more weight to it. Now I'm going to say, okay, if that's the way God feels about this, why would I even want to pretend to be one of these people? If it makes him so angry, he says, that person deserves to die. It's that wicked. It's that bad. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't want anyone to even accidentally mistake me for one of those people. Because that's really bad. It's really wicked. Verse 12, For all that do these things are abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. But God hasn't allowed you to do that. God hasn't allowed us to do that. Turn, if you would, to chapter 22, just a few pages to the right. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Halloween, we see glorifies death. We see it glorifies the sorcery and witchcraft and wizards and you know, whatever, all, you know, the, the Harry Potters, right? You have kids dressing up like a wizard, like a little wizard. The Bible says it's an abomination. Be careful what you let your kids watch. Oh, ha, ha, this is just fun. Oh, it's just a cartoon. Oh, it's no big deal. Yet it has to do with witchcraft and magic and wizards and all the stuff that the Bible says is wicked. I don't care if there's a princess in it. Don't normalize and play down and downtone the things that God says are abominable. It's not going to do your kids any good. I'll tell you that much. They ought to be growing up with a, a severe distaste and the same type of feeling towards what God feels are abominations. If you want them to grow up and, and to have wisdom and to have knowledge and to be good young men and young women, 
they need to, to hate that sin and to hate those things that are abominable in God's sight and love righteousness and love things that are good and not get caught up in all this worldliness and just and downplay it. Oh, it's no big deal. Then what is a big deal? If, if someone being deserving to be put to death isn't really a big deal, then what is? Where, where do you even draw the line at that point? Deuteronomy 22, look at verse number 5. The Bible says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Another abomination, cross-dressing. But how many times have you seen people dressing up as a woman? I mean, guys, especially the guys, dressing up like a woman for Halloween, because that would be fun. I'm guilty of it. I did it a long time ago when I was in grade school. I thought it was funny. I thought it was a big joke. I had no idea what the Bible... Now, does the Bible say, you know, this is an abomination to God when a man's going to put on a woman's garment, except for on October 31st. Then he's going to laugh about it and, and join in the fun and games and say, oh, <laughs> yeah, you, you good joke. You look real funny as a woman. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 9, fools make a mock at sin. God's not a fool. We ought not to be a fool either. Turning forward to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And back when I was desensitized, I used to think it was a big joke. It was funny. Why? Because that's what you see on TV. That's what you see on Halloween, right? But now it just turns my stomach. I hate seeing guys, you know, I hate seeing women dress up like men and men dress up like women. God hates it. He says that all that do so are abomination unto the Lord. I don't have nothing to do with it. Now I'm going to get into the fear aspect, right? One of the big things about Halloween, that's, that's why they have the death promotion and the sorcery and the witchcraft and the devils and the, you know, the devil horns and the pitchforks and everything else. All that stuff, the spiders and everything that's going to, you know, snakes, whatever. Anything to invoke fear in people is what Halloween's all about. The, ha the haunted houses. Let's go and just and, and have people scare us. And that'll be fun. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse number 7, the Bible reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It is not of God for you to be afraid for anything. And fear is not a good thing. How many, how many people here read Revelation 21.8 when you're out soul winning and show that list of sins to people? I do. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to focus on when it says, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth the fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But what are the first few words? But the fearful and unbelieving. The fearful. It's the first thing on that list. To sin to be fearful. We ought not to be afraid. Why? Because our trust is to be in the Lord completely and He's our strength. Now, None of us are perfect. There's times in your life when you do end up experiencing fear. But it's not something to be glorified. It's not something we should be seeking out and just trying to get to be afraid and to have all this fear and to scare other people and to set everything up and, and use all these props and all these things that are, you know, demonic people and just to scare people. It's not right. But that's what Halloween is all about. Verse number seven again, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light 
through the gospel. We are to be children of light. We're supposed to walk in the day as children of the day, children of the light, and not children of night. The Bible says that all the wicked things happen at night. That's when the vast majority of your, of your wicked crimes and your adulteries and, and your thefts and all the things that, you know, it happens at night by the children of darkness. Let's not glorify those things. Let's not participate and have anything to do with those things. And let's definitely not teach our kids that all, every other day of the year, this stuff is wicked. We have nothing to do with it. But it's okay one day of the year. Just one day. No, it's never okay. It's never good. It's never something we're going to participate in. And my last point, it's a shorter sermon just because it's a simple concept. I hope it doesn't take like hours and hours of preaching to teach that Halloween is a wicked holiday. Now, I don't know if anyone even, you probably already know this. I don't know. But it's something I feel inclined to preach year after year because, you know, there's people that are all different walks in their spiritual life and need to hear this stuff and just need to hear the truth about it. And if someone's going out and, and participating, like I said, it's between them and God, but I preach this early enough. I'm not going to preach it on Halloween. I preach it before Halloween because maybe you were ignorant of this. Maybe you didn't know. Maybe you just never really thought about it because you've already just been conditioned as a child, going through this, and it's just something that seems fun to you. You never really gave it too much thought. But I preach it early enough to give you enough thought so you can cancel any plans or not make any plans. You might have had to go out to those parties and get dressed up and, and be involved with that and promote that and decorate your old house and, and make everything fearful. It's not right. And the last point even is just the, the trick-or-treating aspect of the tradition. This is the question that's being asked right now. They don't even realize it. And I never thought about this when I was young. Be honest with this or keep it real. You go out, what do you do? You can trick or treat, trick or treat, and then people give you candy. And you get conditioned to just learn. You just go up to a door, you say trick or treat, and someone's going to throw candy in your bag, right? That's the tradition. That's what people do. But what is it that you're really doing? Trick or treat means give me a treat or else. So what is it that you want from me? Do you want a trick? Do you want me to trick you? Do you want me to do something to you? Do you want me to do something bad to your house? You, you know, or are you going to give me something? I mean, that's what it really means. That is what trick or treat means, regardless of what's actually happening when kids go out today. Now, I'm sure there are some kids that if someone said, I don't have anything for you, probably would give them a trick. Because it is a day that a lot of kids go out and do some really bad things. That's where you're going to have a lot more vandalism. That's you're going to have a lot more of those types of crimes and people transgressing and not caring about other people's property. It's on Halloween. Because they get caught up in the wickedness and think, uh, you know, they, they become more rebellious. It's a fact. And like I said, I know that the vast majority of kids, they're not going out with the intention of, you know, tricking people. They're just, they're just being conditioned like everyone else is. But everything that we do has meaning to it. And it will have an impact and an influence on you as a person. And, and, and it might even be subconscious. You don't really think about it that much, but that's what it is. That's what's being ingrained in the head. And you know, that's part of the reason of even having traditions. Typically, you, you establish traditions, and we see that all throughout Scripture, what, when traditions are being established, when they're established on God's Word. Part of the, the law of instituting all of the sacrifices and things like that, those, those are traditions. Those are things that people need to do. There's things that were done every year, every seven years. All these things that were instituted in the Bible in order to help the people of God remember things and to just have that ingrained in their culture. That's why they had certain songs that they said, you know what? This song is going to be, end up testifying against you. It's going to be something that culturally everyone's going to know this song. They're going to memorize it. They're going to repeat it. It's going to get passed down from generation to generation to generation. And God knows it's going to get to a point to where people probably aren't going to be paying much attention to what the words of the song even says. And they're just going to be getting more and more wicked. But it's going to be this cultural tradition thing that's been passed down. So they're going to continue passing down these songs. But eventually someone's going to listen to it and go, wait a minute. 
what is this actually saying? Wow, how far we've slipped from God's word and you, there's actually meaning to this and that's the purpose of those is to bring you back to ratchet things back to keep that in your mind well that would be a good tradition but all traditions will serve that purpose because it's something that's repetitive it's something you're doing day you know year after year or day after day or whatever your tradition is whatever your repetition is make sure the traditions that you're keeping are good Halloween is a wicked tradition and when the kids go out year after year after year you know, I came up with, I didn't even hear preaching on the trick or treat thing. I figured it out on my own. I didn't figure out when I was real little, but after a while, it's like, yeah, that's, that's what's being said. Because after a while, you just start thinking, why do you say trick or treat? Why, like, why even do that? Oh, oh yeah, okay, well, that makes perfect sense. Give me something or I'm going to do something to you. That's, a, that's what's being taught. I mean, do you really want that passed on to your kids? And, and to do something that by all appearances, even the, the, the little kids will tell you, that's scary, that's weird, I don't want anything to do with that, mom, keep me away from that, I don't want to walk by that in the store. All appearance is wicked, but we do it because it's fun. Does that sound like a good reasoning? No, but then, but then what do churches do? They Christianize it, right? And I don't even know how they do it because the kids are all still dressing up. I guarantee you there's no standard on that, right? They do their trunk or treat. And they just say, well, everyone just come to church and just get all your candy here, right? No. We're not going to have anything to do with that wicked holiday. Now, is it a sin to dress up in a costume? Depends on what it is, right? If you're cross-dressing, that's not right. If you're trying to dress up like some devil or something like that, that's not right. But my kids put on a, a cat costume or whatever, things like that. I mean, is that a really a big deal to play like that? I don't think so. I don't think so personally. I think that's fine. But we're not going to go out and, and still participate in something that is so overtly wicked and just say, well, my kids aren't going to do that, but they're still going to go and do everything else and participate in all the wickedness. Just as much as I don't go to Halloween parties. If someone invites me to, I'm not going to go and say, well, I just won't dress up, but I'm going to go anyways. I just don't want to have anything to do with that. I'm just going to keep myself from that and say, you know what? I don't think that I, I just, that's not, it's not a holiday I celebrate. Not even a holiday. It's not a day I celebrate. I don't think it's a good day. I wish, I wish it didn't exist. I wish October 31st was just another day. So no, I'm not going to go and perpetuate the tradition that's being passed on. And I, you know what? I think that's the right thing to do. I think that's a Christian thing to do. I think that anyone who loves God, anyone who loves wisdom, for sure, isn't going to love death. But we need, we need to hold ourselves to a standard. You want to be right in God's eyes? Let's hold ourselves to it. <laughs> Let's at least hold ourselves to a standard that when God says something's an abomination, that we want to have nothing to do with it. Can, can we at least agree to that? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing with that because that's like way down here. Just staying away from abominations. Hey, in this church, we're not trying to set the standard really, really low. So this should be a no-brainer. Of course we're not going to participate in Halloween. In such a devilish day. We're actually trying to set our standards really high and, and, and keep ourselves unspotted from the world as much as possible. Halloween should be a no-brainer. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the clear teaching and the wisdom and instruction that you give us from your word. As I mentioned earlier, Lord, I pray that you please help us to make the proper applications that we see from Scripture. When we see these clear teachings and doctrine that we can make the application as it exists today in our, in our current culture and time. 
because your words, your commands are timeless. They don't, they don't revolve around any particular culture. There's, they're just true. And we need the, the sense to be able to take that truth and apply it so that we're not doing things, even ignorantly. Lord, if anyone was ignorant about this subject before, you know, obviously, I'm not going to blame them for their ignorance, but, but now I pray that you please help us all to just do what's right and, and make good decisions and um, love your word and love wisdom enough to just stay away from, from the things of the world that are just really wicked and uh, help us to be able to discern right from wrong. God, we love you and we thank you so much for, um, for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray.